You're watching Access Minnesota. Here's Jim Dubois. Milkweed Editions is a nonprofit literary publisher that publishes between 12 and 20 books a year. Access finds out what's involved in the process of publishing. Daniel Slager, publisher and CEO of Milkweed Editions, welcome to Access Minnesota. Thank you very much, Jim. Pleased to speak with you. Daniel, how did Milkweed Editions begin? Milkweed Editions was founded in 1979, originally as Milkweed Chronicle, which was a literary journal publishing mostly poetry and um, some images. In 1984, Milkweed published its first book. Um, the organization was founded as a nonprofit organization in 79, though, by two individuals, Emily Buckwald, who was the longtime publisher of the press, and Randy Scholes, who is a wonderful book artist and artist. Um, Emily ran the press until her retirement, it will be now about seven years ago, and so for about 25 years, um, and built the, the amazing legacy uh, we work on now. And Daniel, when did you come on board? I came on board in the fall of 2005. I moved here from New York City um, for this position. Have you made any changes at Milkweed since you took over? Well, we're publishing a few more books for young readers than we were when I arrived, and a couple more books. We publish books in four genres. I should say at the outset, we publish fiction, poetry, narrative nonfiction, and we publish fiction for young readers. And uh, we're publishing a few more books in that last category, books for young readers, and a bit more nonfiction. But on the whole, no major changes in our publishing program. As a nonprofit publishing house, how does Milkweed differ from a for-profit publishing house? Well, the simplest way to put this would be to say we're in a position as a nonprofit organization to publish books um, not only because they contribute to our bottom line. We take books because of their outstanding literary quality, and uh, we're publishing literature of lasting value, and literature of lasting value is not always profitable, thus the existence of nonprofit literary presses. The Milkweed website lists three books available as e-books. How are these books selected, and do you plan on digitizing more of Milkweed's catalog? Yes. Beginning this year, uh, this is our first year in which all books are being published simultaneously as printed and ebook editions. And in the as we we're doing that, we're also working our way back through the backlist. Um, our expectation is that within, say, two years, uh, we should have a good 50 ebooks available. The big six publishers have been in a kind of pricing war with Amazon. Mm -hmm. Are companies like Amazon with the Kindle or Apple with the iPad, Google with Google Books, are they threatening the existence of the traditional publishing industry? Well, one can either think of it as uh, threatening or new opportunities, and, and as is usually the case, there's some of both at work here. Um, the world is changing really quickly. The, the, no matter how much one loves printed books, and I'm of course a great lover of them, uh, the internet has changed the game. I view companies, uh, these initiatives you mentioned and these companies, as responses to the changing interests of consumers and the changing tastes of consumers. And as publishers, if we're not responsive to that as well, we will fade. And um, we're determined to remain relevant. Our approach is a kind of a hybrid approach. We invest arguably more than most publishers do in, the, in high quality production of our books because it's very important to us that they're beautiful. And, and that they are of lasting value. At the same time, we are quickly making inroads into and, and working on our own digital strategy, uh, developing a new website, um, and increasingly in the ebook part of the market as well. So um, we feel that were we to ignore what's going on in the marketplace, we would eventually be irrelevant, and we're determined to, to remain a leader in our field. The Google settlement is still awaiting a final decision. Are you or any of your authors concerned about the outcome of that decision and how it might affect copyrights? Um, yes, of course. Um, copyright's an important principle. Uh, it's, in, it's in the Constitution of the United States of America, and um, it is an important principle. That said, the, the length of term of copyright was not set in the Constitution. That's something that's been continually revised. Right now, copyright lasts for a very long time, and I think that what the, the framers of the Constitution and, and what we all still should be focused on is balancing 
the copyright of the creators of work with the public interest. That's where copyright should be. And I think that continually revisiting that is a good thing, is a positive thing. And that's part of what's going on in the, in the Google Book settlement. We are always attempting to be mindful of the threats and protective of our authors, and their interests and our interests, and usually they coincide um, with regard to new entrants into the marketplace. Um, but it's always a mixed bag. Tell us about some of the milkweed releases that are coming up that you're particularly excited about. The title I've been most focused on lately, in part because I've been working on it, in part because it's a local author and so I see him around, is a title we'll be publishing in September, a novel called Vestments, uh, a debut novel by a writer in St. Paul named John Reimringer. All of it's set in St. Paul, and so it's very evocative of the atmosphere here and of this place, um, but also explores uh, a lot of very rich and interesting elements of the human experience, and that's what we're trying to do with our books. So that's one I've been focused on increasingly recently. Daniel Slager, publisher and CEO, Milkweed Editions, thanks so much for joining us on Access Minnesota. Thank you very much, Jim.